So our journey is going to start with the Super Duper Looper. This was the third roller coaster in Hershey Park's history. And in my opinion, this roller coaster is Hershey Park's most important attraction of their entire history. This is the coaster that really put Hershey Park on the map and was our first truly marquee attraction. And I'm not denying Comet's greatness either. Comet is a very amazing PTC Woody. But Super Duper Looper is a coaster that really put Hershey Park on the map and really installed them as a player in the coaster scene. Regardless, Super Duper Looper, the milestone that it has is that this is the first looping coaster on the East Coast. This was the first roller coaster to complete an inversion to go upside down with its iconic vertical loop on the eastern side of the United States. The only coaster in the United States that beat Super Duper Looper to this title was Revolution at Six Flags Magic Mountain on the West Coast. And if you ask me, Super Blooper is the better ride, but that's not the point of this video. Super Blooper really paved the way for so many roller coasters, not only at Hershey Park, but in the entire amusement industry. It broke a barrier that, at the time, people thought that was untouchable. This paved the way for rides such as Great Bear, Stormrunner, and Fahrenheit in Hershey Park's history. So the Super Blooper is very significant for being the first looping coaster, not only at Hershey Park, but on the entire East Coast. So the next coaster we'll be talking about is a coaster that's pretty looked down upon in Hershey Park's lineup, and that is Sidewinder the Vacoma Boomerang. But it turns out, Sidewinder actually has a couple of cool facts going for it. And that is the fact that this was the first Vacoma Boomerang to actually have official Vacoma trains on them. That's right, prior to Sidewinder, every Vacoma Boomerang used aerodynamics trains. The coaster itself was a Vacoma, obviously, but the trains you sat in were aerodynamic trains prior to Sidewinder. While it's a fact people may just gloss over, I still think it's very significant when we dive into the deeper meaning of this. While in the present day we're all sick of Vacoma Boomerangs, at the time this was big for Vacoma, as they were establishing themselves as a player in the industry, one of the major manufacturers at the time, and the fact that their own trains now, but they could build more of these things and evolve as a manufacturer to what they are today with their amazing coaster models, whether it's a launch coaster or all the crazy stuff you have over in Europe. The Coma has really evolved, and I think Sidewinder, with the Coma installing their very own trains, is a huge milestone for them as it paved the way for their future roller coaster models. Next up is Wildcat, and again, this is one that is pretty well known, but for those that are unaware, Wildcat was the first coaster ever built by Great Coasters International, better known as GCI. I think the importance of this kind of writes itself. It was the manufacturer's first ever roller coaster. There's really not much more that needs to be said here. Next up, we have the Great Bear, and there's really not too much to note about Great Bear, but I did find one stat that I thought that was pretty cool and appealing, so I'll share it with you. Great Bear was actually the first inverted looping coaster in Pennsylvania. The reason why I think this is very cool is because if we look at the Super Duper Looper, that was the first ever traditional looping coaster, not only in Pennsylvania, but the entire East Coast. And then with the Great Bear, they had the first inverted loop in Pennsylvania. So to hold both of those titles, I feel like is a very, not only underrated, but very fascinating statistic in the entire grand scheme of things. I'm surprised Hershey Park does not market this more. The fact that they have the first traditional looping coaster and the first inverted looping coaster. I don't know, for, to me that sounds really cool. Let me know what you guys see in the comments down below. Am I just being a roller coaster geek, or is that a cool statistic? You guys tell me. Next up, we have my all-time favorite roller coaster at Hershey Park, Lightning Racer. This coaster is my favorite so for so many reasons. I already talked about why. The link will be in the upper right-hand corner if you want to hear more about it. But one of the reasons why I love Lightning Racer so, so much is this was the first modern dueling and racing coaster with unique layouts. Dueling coasters were already a thing long before Lightning Racer's time. You have coasters such as Racer at Kennywood, or Racer at Kings Island, or Racer 75 at Kings Dominion. Very unique names, by the way, I might want to add. But Lightning Racer, these were two unique coasters, Thunder and Lightning respectively, that were put together to make one epic dueling coaster. Prior to Lightning Racer, the only kind of racing coasters that we knew of in the roller coaster industry were coasters like Racer that had two tracks that were practically identical but just mirrored. Lightning Racer was the first of its kind to have two separate wooden roller coasters that came together to provide one epic thrilling experience. Next coaster we'll be referring to is Stormrunner Vertical Horsepower, a coaster I miss very dearly and I hope to get on again very, very soon. 
Regardless, Stormrunner holds multiple titles that I want to talk about. The first of these, this was the first accelerator coaster to utilize over-the-shoulder restraints. It was also the first of a dual loading station with switch tracks. Likewise, it was also the first accelerator coaster to feature inversions. Lastly, this was the first coaster of its kind on the East Coast. Prior to Stormer, there was another intimate accelerator built, actually called Accelerator, at Knott's Berry Farm, but Stormrunner was the first one we saw at the East Coast, obviously at Hershey Park. As I just mentioned, it was also the first to have over-the-shoulder restraints, and while I think we all wish Stormrunner had lap bars, I guess it's still worth knowing that it was the first to have OTS restraints, and lastly, it was the first to have a dual loading station with switch tracks. I think this is the most coolest out of all of them, just because in the industry, this is now something we see all the time, it helps capacity so much. So see Hershey Park introduce the dual loading station on an accelerator coaster, I think it's very cool and very significant to the industry overall. And before we leave Stormer, I also do want to mention this is the only roller coaster in the world to feature a flying snake dive. This is an inversion that actually inverts you twice. It is a very rare and super cool inversion. Also has a really cool name, Flying Snake Dive. But the fact that Stormer is the only roller coaster in the world that has one, and this coaster was built back in 2004, so 17 years later, to still be the only roller coaster to feature one is very cool and significant as well. Similarly to Storm Runner, Fahrenheit also has a very unique element as well. This was the first roller coaster in the United States to ever use a Norwegian loop. Of course, we all know Fahrenheit for its iconic 97 degree vertical drop. But did you know that this drop was once a world record holder? That's right, at the time of its opening, Fahrenheit had the record for the world's steepest roller coaster. Unfortunately, Fahrenheit no longer holds that record. Either way, to even hold the record or have the record at a certain point is still very noteworthy for Fahrenheit. Next up, we have Skyrush. Skyrush was actually a prototype roller coaster model. This was Intamin's version of a wing coaster. This was the Intamin prototype wing coaster. And this wing coaster is very different from the ones you see on B&M's. This thing is an absolute beast. Skyrush was the first of its kind, super compact. It offered the wing outer seats, which classified it as a wing coaster, but it also has the traditional inner seats. I still can't believe Intimate managed to build this thing right next to Comet and over the pond. It is still blows my mind to this day. I have no idea how Intamin did it, but I'm so happy that we have it. Part of the reason that Skyrush is always down, always seems to have downtime, is because it's a prototype. Prototypes are notorious for always having various issues because it's the first of their kind. Issues are always bound to happen on your first go around at something. So if you know why Skyrush is always down, there's a little fun fact for you. But regardless, Skyrush, the first ever Intamin Wing Coaster. And to conclude this list, we have three more rides that were actually world first. Laugh Track was the first indoor spinning glow coaster in the United States. Breaker's Edge, which I refuse to count as a roller coaster, it is a water ride, not a roller coaster if you park. Regardless, Breaker's Edge was the first hydromagnetic water coaster to feature flying saucer turns. Now for me personally, I'm not very technical with the water ride side of things, so if you guys know what flying saucer turns are, Please tell me in the comments down below, I would love to learn more about water rides. And lastly, we have the Hershey's Triple Tower, which was the world's first Choose Your Thrill Drop Tower. As we all know, Hershey's Triple Tower, it has the, the tiny Kisses Tower, the medium-sized Reese's, and then the giant Hershey's Tower. This was the first drop tower ride of its kind to have three different heights and versions of a drop tower embedded into one attraction. So that is actually a very cool world's first. Regardless, at the end of the day, for me personally, it is so cool to see how many unique world's first or record-breaking attractions Hershey Park have built in their history. It's very fascinating and honestly very cool to see how many times they have done this. Most parks only hold and say they've done these types of things maybe once or twice, but for Hershey, it is a handful. Which one of these records or world's first was your personal favorite? I would love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments down below. Regardless, if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate a like. And if you are new here, please do consider subscribing. I make all sorts of videos on Hershey Park. If you love Hershey, Pennsylvania, Hershey Park, Hershey's Chocolate World, all of the above, 
this is the place for you. It takes two seconds. You can always change your mind later. But with all that out of the way, from the sweetest chill on Earth to the sweetest viewers on Earth, I bid you all farewell. Have a sweet rest of your day, guys. And I will see you soon from the Hershey Hour. Peace. Oh